What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing a gameplay breakdown and this is going to be kind of a, a coaching episode or a way that I can show you how I put my plays into practice, how I put the things that I share with you, the tips and tricks that I share with you, how I put them into practice in a game. So this is just going to be a gameplay, a commentary, and uh, just a live gameplay commentary for you. So hope you enjoy it. And we are running the West Coast playbook on offense. I run with the Green Bay Packers playbook on defense. I'm using the Niners. I think the Niners, uh, we're just, I'm just playing head-to-head -head just to show you the plays. Um, I don't have a very good mutt. Uh, my, I haven't put a ton of time into mutt this year. And so not even really sure uh, if I will jump into mutt. If you guys would like me to jump into mutt, let me know in the comments. And I could definitely do some stuff. Would love to do some stuff with the rookies coming out. Uh, this year but the mini scheme I gave to you guys the last couple days was from the far tight slot formation and so what I do with the Niners is I sub in Matt Breeder to the running back spot and then I put uh, Raheem Mostert in the fullback spot then I take Goodwin put him in the left slot and then I take Sanders and put him right here I also make sure that my best linemen are on the left side so I'm just going to sub them in real quick here and the play that I come out in and the play that you're going to see today, you're going to see me run. It's going to be a good matchup because we got the Chiefs. I'm going to run the fullback dive. And you'll see I will run it very, 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 very much to the point that you're a little bit bored of it. One thing I haven't, one thing I will, uh, one one idea I wanted to make sure I told you about from the iPhone slot. If you put the stretch in there, that's a nice little audible that you can do real quick from the far tight that's a nice easy um, a nice easy option for you but you'll see I'm gonna literally run fullback dive the majority of this uh, the majority of the first drive and I don't run no huddle out of this primarily because if your running back gets tired uh, there can be some challenges with that I come out in fullback dive every play just to make myself consciously have to run it more than you not there's actually i've noticed in my gameplay that if you come out in your base play every time it forces you to run it more than you would think just because you're already in it you don't want to have to adjust so that's what i do it's actually probably smarter to come out in the curls or come out in the bench switch and so that i can get one hot route out of the way but this is just how i do it so just wanted to show you that and i just like that it forces me to run this because the whole scheme is really predicated on running running the ball and running directly at you. What's good about this, and you'll notice with the fullback dive as you're seeing, he's running the defense that you're going to see people run. I mean, they're going to run this cover four drop show too. What he's not doing right yet is he's not pressing up. But there you see Mostert. And what I do, just so you know, and I hope you watched the video of the fullback dive and where I broke down exactly... Tried to go really in depth with that. Tried to give you a lot of content for how you can utilize this, but I don't. I don't hold turbo until I feel like I'm in the open field. So you'll see. Literally, uh, I don't really hold turbo much uh, until I'm through the basically until I'm through to the safeties, unless like a specific scenario occurs where I want to do that. There you see, I just walked right down the field on him. This is a really, really good red zone offense. It's really why, the core of why I really like it. Here, I'm going to put juice, use check in. But it's a really good red zone offense. It's probably much, I think it's even more effective in the red zone than it is anywhere else. But, anyhow. And you'll see, I'm just going to run the same setup over and over again. There I get stopped. It was a bad read. I think if I would have had Mostert in, I would have been fine. Trucking is not really, I haven't found, at least in head-to-head, -head, and I think in mutt it's actually a little bit better because you can put bruiser on them or you could put, you know, some different features to make it a little bit more effective for trucking. But I've found that the best moves in the game this year are the jukes, the stiff arms, but really just holding the left stick and controlling that really well is what I've found to be really effective. Trying out this new defense with the Niners. So if you know anything about the Niners, you know that they have really good defensive linemen, a really good front four. And so 
I'm going to come out in just a standard Tampa 2. And you've also got this guy here, Fred Warner, who's a zone hawk, or he has the zoned out ability at the linebacker position. So that's really good. Um, that's really good, really effective. So you'll see here, my, my primary defense that I'm going to sit in is this dime 236. And what I'm going to do is run a lot of cover two, a lot of cover three, and I'll use this. Um, I'll actually use this uh, user, this safety on the left some. But basically, I'm not too concerned playing the Chiefs. I'm not too concerned if he wants to run the ball all game. But if he does commit to it, I'll have to change up what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and set up my 3-4 bear. Got some network issues going on. Would you guys like, uh, leave a comment if you would like to see what I'm doing from a defensive perspective this year. Honestly, there's really only a couple defenses that I would say work really well. I've heard a lot of people saying that this year more than... It's a little bit more of a defensive game, and I would I would disagree. Uh, it, I would I would definitely disagree, but maybe I haven't been in. Like I said, I haven't played a ton of mutts, so I think it's a very offensive game this year. But you'll see, I'll come out in this uh, cover three show too a lot, or cover three buzz, cover three buzz show too, and you know basically what I do is I leverage with the Niners, and I think defense is way more about personnel than offenses this year. Um, oh, didn't end up getting it. But I'll, I'll, I'll hang out in this Cover 3 Buzz show too a lot. And what I'll do is I'll basically take... Because uh, Richard Sherman is so good. And like I said, I think this year more than any other year, it's a lot more about your personnel um, than you would you would generally think. Because as you see, there's that there's that attacking um, vertical hooks are definitely, in my opinion, the best zone. Um, or not the best zone in the game, but the best zone for the yellows, just because it's harder to throw those. It gives you just buys you a little bit of time. But there we get the stop. He hasn't really shown me he can stop that running play, the fullback dive. I haven't even had to run it left, or I've only literally ran it only left. But you see, the only way they do stop it is if you have that block shed there. And if you notice, if he doesn't blitz his middle guys, I can easily just slide right in behind my left tackle. And here he brings them down. And that's not a good strategy. As you can see, if they don't blitz those middle linebackers, they're basically screwed. I'm gonna leave McKinnon in. And I would like I said, I would recommend this year, at least with the at least on head to head mode. I would I would much I would much more recommend to run with a a little bit of a what I would call a mobile running back or a more agile back this year because it's really valuable for the way you cut the way you run with that left stick. So at least in head to head, I think the Niners are like the perfect team for this running scheme. But if you were going to like I've tried running this with Derrick Henry, and I haven't had as much success. I've still had success, but I haven't had as much success because Derrick Henry's a little bit more of a power back than he is uh, a running back. I want to check if I can do deep pack right. There we go. But this right here, this coverage is really good that I run out of this. And somehow he just force fed it. Well, what I like about putting Fred Warner 
in the deep blue as opposed to the mid read is I think he's a little bit I think you get a little bit better um, when you put the Crazy. But there's the deep crosser. There he ran with Mahomes. And I'm actually going to do this. I was thinking about moving Sherman off of that. But I'm going to keep him there. Let's put Jason Bray in. this guy's going to come down so now I get that eight man box because Sherman's off they're not going to they're typically not going to run a deep streak on that right side and if they do they're going to get a little bit of a delayed bump and unfortunately he's showing some scramble ability with Mahomes so what I like to do if someone's scrambling with a quarterback I'm going to pick a specific player to be the spy now he's right handed so what we're going to do is create a three-man blitzing crew on that left side. And we're basically going to concede the rollout to the right. But we're basically trying to get a couple two one-on-ones. I think we got burned. Dang it. I forgot to put Fred Warner in the deep blue. But with the Niners, and that's why you want to really know your personnel, because I don't think, and at least with the Niners, what I would do is I would recommend not blitzing more than th like three or four at a time. And I haven't really found that, like, at least in this year's game, I feel like there's only a couple of really good blitzes uh, from the edge. You have right edge, left edge, double edge, and that's about it from what I'm seeing. So for me, I don't actually run a lot of blitzes um, or a lot of unique defensive coverages or anything. But that's just me. This year, more than any other year, I feel like it's cover two the, to be the primary defense. And you know, maybe some people have figured out how to burn it, but I've just not... Every year it seems like I come back to cover two being one of the better defenses in the game. And there you see just breaking off the runs. Here I'm going to go a little hurry up. But you see how you can easily run it outside if you if you are patient with this run. It's very it's it's actually probably a little bit more powerful as a little sweep off that left side than it is just a middle gash. But I like how it gives you the opportunity to do both very easily. And there we just hammer ahead. I would say that the one area that this thing I don't think has a great um, ability to do is it's not one of those like, you know, two play drives. But I mean it can be because of how just how consistent that run is. But as you can see there. And all I'm doing is I'm holding left trigger and then once I find where I want to go, I'm just steering him with that left stick. But I'm just reading the linebackers. And wherever the linebackers go, I try to basically go uh, elsewhere. And I did not mean to call a pass play. My bad. I thought I was running. But that was the Krill's play. So he's got me... See, there's that pinch look that I'm talking about. And there I should have swept it out. But if you get, if basically what I'm saying, guys, when you're running this in the game, if you get a seal on that left edge, you can easily, what's going to happen is those linebackers are going to get sucked in just by the way the game works this year. And so you can easily just loop it out right there. And then you're just, you're just off to the races. And there was just a little juke. But if you, you if you can really master how to use that left stick, um, as you can see there, they, the linebackers they just don't. 
it's not always I, I don't think I've ran it up the middle very much in this opening opening couple series here not that you can I mean here you see I mean I can walk right up the middle too now I'm getting down to kind of well I'm gonna need to do some things so I'm gonna call a timeout my thought process here really quickly is I'm okay if I just take my three but I think he's really having a hard time stopping this run oh go no huddle go in the curls and there's the George Kittle that little seam route because when they when they have to it's it's just a difficult formation to defend because there's so much stress on that middle linebacker and it's so it happens so quickly and if they are wrong if they are wrong with their middle linebacker it is literally going to open up so much so 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 much opportunity so here I kind of know that he's going to be in man to man so I want to show you he's in goal line so I just want to show you really quickly what this route to Sanders look like. Now I know he's a man to man, so I'm gonna go ahead and put Goodwin on a hitch. Right there. But if I hold possession catch, he's gonna do a diving catch animation so that you don't have to deal with catch tackles. But as you can see, it's a very, very effective route inside the five yard line. And then basically, if he was in zone, that would have been wide open. But all we're reading there is if he users it and he tries to take away the left guy, like the guy on the curl route that's coming across, then what I would have done, very simply, all I would have done is I would have taken I think I can take that. Sorry, I was focusing on focusing on that last play there. I think I got one more play. But um what I'm getting at is with the defense or with the offensive read there on that curls play, if the middle linebacker was to take the, the crossing curl route, that hitch route, because I knew he was in man-to-man, -man, that hitch route would have been wide open, wide open. So that's just another option as well. So here he's in Wildcat, which I know they're not going to pass it. At least I don't think they will. And if they do pass it, the only guy that I've got to watch out for, and there's Tyreek. But that's a pretty good first half with this offense. So hopefully, hopefully you're enjoying this, and there's a lot more that you can do. This this scheme, there. I'm trying to keep things. I'm trying to. When I say mini scheme, what I mean by that is simple. I'm trying to keep you to be able to dominate people with five plays or less. Um, because I think if you master, I think it's really difficult to master several plays. And I also think just in the way a game of Madden works, there's not really any value in running more than, more than like five plays. So defensively. Ah, oh, crap, I didn't get my, oh, didn't get my play called. Sorry about that extra noise. But basically, you want to have that the Niners are just the perfect team to run this type of an uh, of a defense where it's four down linemen rush. They just have all the horses to run that. But what I would do with them is to shift them into a three down lineman, especially if you're playing like a Mahomes, so you can have a spy and there he hits the one hole, one hole in that cover two. I wish he was not running. Um, 
I'm just gonna go right into a cover five. Cause I'm all Sherm. Oh, what a play by Sherm. I thought I was gonna pick that off. This 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 two four five odd also, and like I said, I go back and forth on a lot of my on a lot of my defensive strategies this year. Primarily because I think cover four with the right team, with the right personnel, can be very, very effective. And I mean very effective. I can't get my... Oh, he outran me. But with a mobile quarterback like Mahomes, you do have a little bit more of a challenge. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to show you a little trick here. I'm going to go D4 there. But my job is basically the right seam. There we go. But you can see that, like with Mahomes, that's two for five odd because you've got really two really good pass rushers coming off that left edge or that right edge. And then what that's going to do, and I'll show you here, Tampa 2. We're literally just going to send... Our guys off that right edge there. And you see you get that one on one. And he throws a Mahomes makes a Mahomes throw. But that's kind of what I do with the Niners. I mean, there's there's several different defenses, but I just haven't found and this may be just a again, I don't think it's a very I'm a little bit worse defensively than I normally am this year because I feel like you have to rely a little bit more on the abilities to work for you. So especially in head-to-head -head where you only have a limited amount of abilities depending on what team you use, defense has never been more difficult to me because the blitzes are so limited and you're kind of reliant on those X factors. At least, at least that's kind of my take on defense this year. But... Anywho, I mean, I kind of spend basically three, four odd. I almost want to just start passing just to show you, but I literally have not had to. And there you see that's good defense. They're using that guy, bringing him down. Now what I'll show you, and so I'm going to playmaker this to the right. So once they start doing that, where they're bringing that guy in and they're doing all that stuff, we're going to hit them right, direct. We're very direct with that run. And as you can see, when you run it, when you run it to the right, you get a little bit faster of a handoff motion, and you also get a little bit better of blocking from the from the from the running back. But it's also a little bit more designed to be ran right down the middle. All right, so this is a really good time to throw the curls play, And we're just going to snap throw it. So he's going to really, I'm telling you, he's going to over pursue like nobody's business. And of course, we get freaking, dang it. Chris Jones made a Chris Jones play on us there. All right, nickel. Two, four, five. But see how that forces him to roll out to his left. Hopefully you're seeing catching that. But basically what I do on defense is because I have two, um, I actually really like to run cover three cloud. And I'll show you why real quick. But I take Sherman and I put him in the deep zone. And I actually will, you'll see me do this here in this, in this segment here. I'm going to press... I'm going to pinch my line, press, 
play over top coverage. So Sherman is is the one on one guy, and then my job is that right flat or that right hook curl, right in there. That's me. But Fred Warner just got roasted. Dang it. Just got roasted deep. But I really like. You know, I know I I know I just got burned, but I typically will will sit in that cover three cloud type of look and with the nickel two four five what i like about it against a, against a quarterback like mahomes and you're not seeing it so much here i'll go inside quarter but you see you get that walk shed and what i like about it with the niners is you get a good Good, two good pass rushers basically that can easily um, run through that. So, we're still up by two, still by one possession. I don't know why I can't choose or turn middle right now. For whatever reason, I can't pick my play. But offensively, what I hope you noticed on that last drive when we got stopped on fourth and inches. It was, and that's something you do have to, when you're playing a good team like the Chiefs where they have that good nose guard under center, that's something you do have to be a little bit careful of that I was very lackadaisical on, especially for a fourth and inches play. Um, what I should have done is I should have backed him up a little bit more, given myself a little bit more room to throw it, but I just, I screwed up. And that was a really good play by his user. So you see what's happening though is he's starting to figure out how to stop the how to how to contain the dive. I don't think there's a way to actually f fully lock it down. It's so like here we're gonna run right, and it's just a quick. I think we got five there. So now you see that's kind of the way to stop the dive. And I want to show you what it does is it sets you up for a quick audible. And this is what I did want to show you. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to do another breakdown on that iPhone Pro. And there's more to it. But one other play can make all the difference in the world. So you see that I'm going to go to the iPhone slot stretch. Watch what happens to the corners. So you see there. Now my read is the safety. He doesn't go, so I can easily hit that bubble screen, and I'm off to the races. So that's a nice little play that keeps the defense in check because they can't just they can't just bring everybody down like they did there. And if we make it through that run, and there I should have bounced it out left, but if we make it through on that, that's an easy walk-in touchdown. I'm going to show you the curls play. So because he's not pressing up, I'm not going to go with the hitch I'm, or the flat. I'm going to go with the, um, damn it, keep getting. I keep missing that throw. Third and nine. There it is. Finally hit it. Okay. So fourth down. And this is what I'm talking about. Why that I-form slot is a key, uh, a key play to have. Because they can't stop stretch. Their fullback dive defense literally will not stop the stretch. And there you see it. Um, bust a big one. And a big down. And that's what that's that's what I'm saying. I wish if we would have like a if we would have something that could run outside to the right, um, it would make this offense just really really hard to stop. But he doesn't know what to do because he sold everything out to stop that fullback dive on that fourth down and two, because we've been running it consistently. And that's why I say like I'm gonna call it probably 75% of the game. I'm gonna go to the curls play. Get him out wide. And he was wide open. 
But you see, Chris Jones has really stepped up big time for his defense. I'm going to double team him. I'm going to try to maybe... Um, See if that helps. There he is. So just to prove a point here, I'm gonna run fullback dive to the left. We've been running, we've been passing, we've been going to the stretch, we've been doing all that. Here I'm gonna go fullback dive, just pure. And there you see I just got enough. If I break that tackle, that's a touchdown, but and then right off of that, I'm going to go right to the curls. And you'll see, I guarantee you, George Kittle's going to be wide open. And he wasn't. Shoot. That was a bad play call by me. A little bit of a bad play call. And we get him back. We, and I'm telling you, those runs will break. When they start selling out like what he just did, the run will pop very consistently if you just make your blocks. If they don't block, if they don't get block shed, which I would say it's uncommon to get a consistent block shed on that. The, um, the run really does good. Here he's going to over-pursue, and we're going to slide right in behind him. But I hope you're seeing the fullback dive and the power of it being a very simple run. Uh, very simple, but the key to consistently executing it over and over and over again um, is absolutely critical. So defensively, I want to show you that cover three cloud I was working on with the Niners. So basically my job, press coverage. And I basically go cover four and I take anything short is basically mine. And there you see we got him. I like to pinch in. But basically, you see, we've got everything covered on that right. And that's the only thing. And Richard Sherman comes down and plays that. So it's basically a short drag is the only thing that's really open. And I think what I'm going to do, probably want to run cover six, actually, for this. But I just take him there, throw a vertical hook there, and I just use her the three wreck. And there you see there's Fred Warner. And that's the game. Try and give you a little bit more reps with the offense here, but that's going to wrap things up. I don't know. He might quit here. Hopefully he doesn't. Because uh, I just love showing you this offense. And I hope you're seeing this is a very, very, very simple offense. I mean, it's basically three plays that I ran. But with the Niners and with a team that can run the ball effectively, it really is a good ball control type of offense. Didn't show, didn't really need a lot of passing. And, as, and that's pretty much how every game goes for me. So hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helped kind of give some light into the West Coast offense. And we will...